Even though this Build-A-Fig Wave is inspired by a Lantern central story, it seems Todd still can't resist making a Batman. And hey, who am I to complain? Because this figure looks amazing! But first, here's the bottom code for anyone who needs it and a quick box turn. Yeah, I know I usually say more, but we've seen so many of these time and time again that I don't really feel the need to go through it again. Besides, I want to get to the good part. Good part, Cap. Tell Swoop good part. This figure is McFarlane's take on a Black Lantern Batman from the Blackest Night storyline, a character design that's actually surprisingly famous, being featured in both Arkham Origins and Injustice 1. Funny enough, the design is very short-lived, only appearing for like two pages. Granted, he single-handedly changed the battle's favor over to Necron, but aside from that, he spawned, vomited up some rings, and died again. But hey, he looked cool while doing so. A look captured pretty much perfectly in this figure. Uh, the suit design is really nice, kind of a blending a classic and modern design with some Black Lantern uniform in there. The grey has some really nice fabric texture sculpted throughout, while all the blue looks more leathery and slightly warm. Speaking of the colors here, they are so nice and so much better than the promotional images. The darker shades really help with the overall undead feeling the figure gives off. Unlike Superman, all the paint here is very clean and color matching is pretty much spot on. Though the perhaps slightly oversized hands are a little glossy compared to everything else. The symbol on the chest is both sculpted and painted and looks awesome. The ball joints and abdominal area joints I feel blend pretty well into the sculpt. The head is really nice. The face looks like he's screaming or vomiting and is painted really well and even has that undead skin Superman had. The skin that even has some highlights that get darker around the mouth. Whole thing just looks undead and creepy. I love the cape. The sculpt is neutral yet still works for motion and looks incredible. The ripped, torn look is captured perfectly though there's some spots on the inside that I think is supposed to be dirt. Would have been nice to see it painted. The shoulders even have some of that almost spiked look from the cape which looks very cool but I do wonder how that works. Even cooler, they are slightly different sculpts too. On top of that, it's a nice and light, so no Captain Marvel. He stands very easily and stays standing. On top of that, the cape is made of a very soft material, so it very much supports the figure's posability. Dumbbell joint at the head can look up, maybe a little too up, down, tilt, and rotate. Internal ball joint with a rotator cuff allows for some decent butterfly movement and rotation. Hinge joint at the shoulder, rotation at the bicep, full double jointed bend at the elbow, McFarlane wrist balls that can rotate and tilt, ball jointed abdomen and a dumbbell waist, can get a lot of tilt, very deep arcing back, but only a little forward crunch and for some reason the rotating abdomen hack doesn't actually work here. Oh my god bro. Oh hell no man, what the fuck man? McFarlane hips that can kick forward 90 degrees and back almost 90 degrees. He can almost do the full splits. No thigh cut, but there is some rotation at the hip itself. Full double jointed knee bend. McFarlane ankle balls that can swivel, tilt, and pivot. And lastly, a hinge joint at the toes. Not only do the joints feel very nice, but they function well too. And you can get a variety of dynamic poses out of this guy, but I prefer these more undead ones. The expressiveness in both the hands and face really lean to these kinds of looks. Though I do wish he had like an alternate set of fists, but hey, at least they didn't forget the ring this time. Just wish they would have fucking painted it. Speaking of, these figures' accessories are all but non-existent. Again. Which is unfortunate. Would have been nice to have fists, like I said before, and maybe even a vomiting head or effect. Perhaps, but when he but what he does come with is a black hockey puck stand, the arms of Atrocitus, and his collector's card featuring the artwork from the box. This image is taken directly from the comic itself, and this is the panel depicting the ring vomit. The image looks incredible and is completely accurate to what we get, and we get a bio on the back that's once again is actually specific to this version of the character. Honestly, this is an example of a perfect collector's card on all sides. Five out of five. And with that, that's it. Size-wise, Batman stands at around seven inches to the top of his head and seven and a quarter to the top of his ears. 
For comparison, here he is next to Reaver Superman, Black Adam, Parallax, Optimus Prime, Captain Rex, his wave mate, Black Lantern Superman, Morgana from Persona 5, and Superpower statue Hal Jordan. Overall, this figure is great. Looking at this figure in comparison to Superman is like night and day, or night and blackest night. Superman as a figure I'd say was a little below average, and while I certainly liked him, he had a lot of minor problems. Poor skin tone matching, missing details, slightly less articulation. Well, Batman here is almost perfect. The colors are on point, the sculpt is accurate, no missing details, and extremely expressive. While his expression might limit him a little bit, the poses you can make from it look incredible. The only thing really holding this guy back are a couple of unpainted details, mostly the ring, and a severe lack of accessories. But he does get bonus points for the card. So that pretty much covers it for this review. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like, I do have an Instagram which you can follow. My handle will be shown on screen wherever. And with that, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one. You've heard of Sharknado. We'll get ready for Death Storm.